bad. Good morning. Good morning. Let us call ourselves to worship. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all people praise you. Amen, amen. Good morning. How are you? Good. Welcome to West New Bern Presbyterian Church. We're here today to celebrate God's action in our lives, and we don't do, just do this on Sundays, but throughout the week. So I encourage you all to find ways to engage in your relationship with God, with each other, and in our community. And although we don't do this just on Sundays, today uh, we actually have uh, a lot going on. So I want to remind you all that uh, at the, uh, uh, in between our prayers of the people and the Lord's Prayer, we'll do something a little different today, uh, we'll have a congregational meeting uh, to approve the ter new terms of call. Uh, and then after our worship service, we have our fellowship meal. Everyone is invited for this fellowship meal, we've, we have uh, a lot of folks uh, working in the kitchen um, for meatloaf and mashed potatoes and soup and all sorts of stuff. So it's going to be uh, a fantastic meal. Uh, so I hope you all can enjoy us, um, join us. And then also today at 3 p.m. at First Presbyterian Church, we have uh, a memorial service for Logan. Uh, so I invite you all to join us to support uh, Trey and Mariah uh, during this time. As you can see, we have a lot of opportunities to engage. And so I hope you find, some of the, uh, find a way to uh, participate in some of those opportunities. So let us now continue our worship with our hymn of praise. It is hymn 454, Blessed Jesus at Your Word, 454. Let us now rise in body or spirit and sing together. Our scripture reading today comes from Acts 16, 
verses 9 through 15. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troos, Troos and took a straight course to Samothrace. The following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer. We sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. And she was from the city of Thyatira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, She urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I'd like to invite our uh, children to come forward. Hey, good morning, Benji. Long time no see. Good morning, Amelia. Where are your glasses? No spy glasses in worship. Yeah, got it. All right, good morning. Hey, how are you, buddy? What do you got there? Don't need to be shy. Oh, okay, that's fine. After worship, okay. Thank you. Well, good morning. Good morning. It's good to see you all. Guess what we're doing after worship today? What? We're going to eat a lunch here. That's right. We're going to eat lunch. Right now after the worship? Yeah, that's right. Right after worship. You know, what's lunch? Meatloaf. You mean what's for lunch? Yeah, meatloaf, and mashed potatoes. And and soup and like salad. Them. That's okay. Skip the, you can skip like the soup. Them. I don't like soup and salad. Yeah. Good. That's all right. All I love is mashed potatoes and meatloaf. Mashed potatoes and meatloaf. What's a meatloaf? It's a, it's, a, it's a loaf of meat. <laughs> it is. It's, it's a big loaf of meat. Kind of like a hamburger. Like a hamburger. Yeah. Do you guys know why we're having lunch at church? <laughs> exactly, we eat lunch at church. Why? Do you know why? Why do we eat lunch at church? Yeah? We serve a change of 12, one of the um, 12 disciples um, was eating at their at, um, the last day of Jesus. That's right, so Jesus ate with his disciples, right? And it's a, a reminder of, uh, yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, it's a reminder that we eat, uh, that Jesus ate with his disciples. But food can be a great opportunity to get to know one another. Well, we all have to eat, right? So while we're eating, we get to talk with one another. Sometimes we say that church is just about worshiping, right? We say we're going to worship, we're going to church. Why isn't there a snack like chips? Why isn't there a snack like chips? Like during worship? No, I bet, hey, I bet we could find you some chips. Anyway, 
the whole point is there is so much more to what we call church than just worship. Worship is very important. It is very important for us to come and to, to pray and read scripture. Hold on, buddy. But it's also important. Yeah, thank you. It's also important for us to build relationships with each other, to work in the garden with each other, to do uh, other outreach and mission work, and to fellowship with each other and have lunches. And so there's a whole lot more about being in a community than just worshiping together. So when you are sitting down and eating lunch today, I want you to meet one new person. Do you think you can do that? No. No? You don't think you can do that? You don't think you can meet one new person? You've met everyone here. You know everyone by name. They might know you by name, but do you know them by name? All right, I'm going to test you then. We'll do, we'll do a test. All right? During lunch. I'll go introduce you, and you need to tell me everybody's name. All right? All right. All right, hey, Benji, can we pray? Yeah, let's pray. You ready? Dear God, Dear God we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. For community. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right, good job, guys. All right, why don't you guys uh, walk out with Miss Jean and Miss Rebecca? We'll meet you out there. Then you guys will get to hang out where it smells like good food. And we will do our best to hurry and join you all. All right. <laughs> All right. Let us now call ourselves to confession. Do not let your hearts be troubled. But confess your sins and God will give you peace. Let us pray. Loving God, we confess that we are anxious people who deny your blessing and fail to keep your word. Forgive us, we pray, for these and all your sins, that we might live in peace and reflect your love in the world. Through Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. My friends, let your hearts be still, for God loves you and forgives all your wrongdoings. Beloved, receive the peace of Christ. May the peace of Christ be with you. Let us continue our worship with our hymn of preparation. One of my favorite hymns, My Hope is Built on Nothing Less. It is hymn 379. Let us now rise, body or spirit, and sing together.
chapter 14, verses 23 through 29. Let us now go to God in prayer. Come, 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 Holy Spirit. Be our guest. We ask, Lord, that you be with us today as we explore your word. We ask that you lift up your word out of this beloved text. We ask that you open up our hearts and our minds and our souls so that we may digest this word, discern it, and take it with us. All this in your name we pray. Amen. Jesus answered him, those who love me will keep my word. My father will love them. We will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, occurs. I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we in near, or as we near the end of the Easter season, today's text, both the text from Acts and the text from John, 
serves in a way a summary of what we've explored these last several weeks and helps lead us to the two big moments that we encounter after Easter, the ascension of the Lord and Pentecost, reminds us of the question presented to us on Easter Sunday as Peter observed the empty tomb. Now what? Now what do we do with this? What are we to do after witnessing the life, death, and resurrection of Christ? And just like Peter, we too are invited into ministry and the opportunity to build Christ's church on that empty tomb. It also reminds us as the disciples begin to share the good news to the ends of the earth, including Paul's journey we read about today, we too walk our own path with God. Again, inviting, again, invited to not only transform our own lives, but to pass that on, to share it with those that we meet. This is why we have that reminder every single Sunday to take what we have here in this place on that day out into the world. This is no accident that we gather here today. The people in this room, the people that are a couple of doors down getting ready for our fellowship meal. This is no accident that we come together as a community. And finally, it once again provides witness of what we explored last week, the Holy Spirit breaker of chains, the sometimes unexpected movement of the Spirit. Although it might be unexpected, it is dependable. Some of you might also recognize the Trinitarian structure here, and if we are willing also recognize our community's understanding of ministry that we set out to seek and how we are rooted in God's love and we are reaching for a life in Christ and responding to the call of the Spirit. All three equally important. Always at work to help guide our faith. And as we stand together with our collective imagination, peeking into the dark, cold, empty tomb with the luxury of 2,000 years of theology, we eventually recognize the sight of God's ultimate love for us. This empty tomb is the foundation of God's love that our life together is founded on. Imagine that. Imagine the innovation to see the ultimate sacrifice in the picture of an empty, cold, dark tomb. That is what our faith is founded on. So just as we witness the empty tomb together, we also help each other learn from each other, make ourselves available for one another. And once our roots quench our thirst and our reaching branches satisfy our hunger, we respond. And that's what we really witness in today's passages. Today's text in Acts, Lydia demonstrates her response to the liberating movement of the Spirit, what the other passage called the advocate, our advocate, the promise of an ever-flowing, always-present, always-teaching Holy Spirit, a Spirit that holds us all together. We read in the 
passage that the Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. In other words, her heart, her soul was set on fire by the Spirit. And she was invited to act. Now this seems like a a, a kind of minor moment, a minor witness of the Holy Spirit. But to fully grasp what we are witnessing in this passage, we must think about all that led up to this. Of course, the promise of the advocate. But most importantly, what we explored last week, where Peter dines, breaks bread with the Gentiles. We see later the fruits of that work in this interaction today. You guys all know that because of my dyslexia, I always would prefer to skip all of the difficult clutter that happens in some of these texts beforehand, all the cities and uh, locations and geographical locations that they explore. But it's important, especially in this one, to see this, to see Paul's travels, to see exactly where he goes. He breaks those boundaries down and starts to explore these European territories. Again, following the foundation of Peter breaking bread with Gentiles. We also are reminded that it took Peter, or it took Paul several times before actually making it. He was redirected by the Holy Spirit multiple times. And here's a key part, something that really, really is something that we can relate to today. It wasn't until Paul shared his vision with his buddies. That's what it means by not locking up those moments of transformation, by not locking up and and keeping your relationship with God personal. If we do that, it is almost impossible for us to be a collective body. But Paul shares his vision, shares what uh, this Macedonian man that they were looking for. And oddly enough, they find a woman. And not just a woman, but a woman who is on her own, a woman who has her own business. The first converts in Philippi are rooted in this interaction. Not just breaking down the barriers of Gentile and Jew, but the whole power struggle or the whole power structure reminding us that our faith is built on things that we once thought were not possible. Paul shared his message to Lydia. And in return, we start to witness the growing church, the ever-innovative and evolving church. I shared with several of you this past week about a story I read, the history of the shopping cart. That sounds really dull. (laughs) But as soon as I saw the the headline, I I knew I had to read this. But what was so funny is that we're interviewing one of the first folks who uh, implemented shopping carts in his store in Oklahoma in the 70s. He was sharing to the local news This was going to change the grocery store forever. He was convinced. He was absolutely convinced 
the shopping cart was going to change how people shopped. But to his surprise, the shopping carts, when they first arrived, were left in the corner untouched. Everyone went into the store and absolutely hated the idea. The women said they were tired of pushing babies all day. They don't want to push their groceries around. And men said they were too strong to be seen pushing a shopping cart. We can, we can handle carrying our own baskets. No, thank you. Of course, we all now know that shopping cart is a regular. We're pushing it around. And of course, this article also shared some of the bad habits that were created once the shopping cart became a staple in the grocery store. We started doing a lot more impulse buying, throwing things in our cart, going to the store without a plan. Grocery stores got bigger and bigger. But the point is, and we can share examples all day, the point is innovation is almost always rejected at first. And that is absolutely true with the church. Absolutely true with the church. And I was thinking back on times I've read stories about how hymnals and bulletins were rejected. Thinking about how music and different instruments were rejected. And so it's not a surprise that when we think of innovation in the church, we're still even stuck on the things that were rejected. My friends, the church is changing. We all know it. It was changing before the pandemic. But we are not being fully imaginative if we think that the change is just going to be a different instrument or uh, using a screen every Sunday. The change is going to be far deeper, far more revolutionary than that. And I know, and if we reflect on history, we'll see that we will probably reject it time and again. But hopefully, just as Paul was redirected several times in his ministry, we too will be redirected and get to a point where we can trust each other to share our ideas without the fear of rejection, without the fear of hurting someone's feelings, being open to hearing what new ideas people have. I've heard in my time with you all, so many wonderful ideas from old folks, from young folks, from people that have been in the church their entire life and from people that this is a new experience. And we must listen to each other. We will be so foolish if we think that the Spirit only speaks through one person or in one way or just at the pulpit or just on the session. We must trust the work of the Spirit. So my hope this summer and beyond we start thinking realistically. We start thinking about the future, about the future of this church, without the fear of we haven't done it that way, without the fear of are people going to come back or are they just going to you know, hang out online. We need to just accept who we are, where we are, what we are. 
so that we can start focusing on how we are going to open up our minds to follow the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our hymn of response is Dear Lord and Father. As many of you know, we only sing the first verse of our hymn of response. And that hymn is verse, or I'm sorry, that hymn is 345. So let us now rise in body or spirit and sing together.
Creator God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, for all that you have given to us. The life, death, and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ. We ask, Lord, that even though we have no way of paying back the debt of your Son and the life he gave for us, for new life, for the forgiveness of sins. We ask, Lord, that you be with us as we work day in and day out to respond in a rightful way. So we ask, Lord, that you take our time, you take our talents, and you take the resources we present to you today to go out there and do your work. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have any joys and concerns to share? So in the season of the Spirit, let us offer our prayers and thanksgivings for the world, saying, Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. All creation lives to praise you, O God. As the earth yields its blessing, may we honor and protect the precious gifts of nature and give thanks for the beauty, healing, and and sustenance it provides for all. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You bless your church throughout all the ages with leaders like Paul and Lydia to share in the spreading of the gospel. Give to your church this day a profound sense of the mission to which you now call us for the life and health of the world. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You judge the people with equity and guide the nations of the earth. Give to all leaders and people the gift of wisdom and the spirit of peace that we may walk by your light as we serve the common good. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. You promise to be with us always through the comfort of your Holy Spirit. Give to all who suffer voice, who suffer violence, grief, or pain, an enduring trust in Jesus that Joy will rise again. Lord, send out your spirit and renew the face of the earth. We give thanks for the many blessings of our lives. And as we follow Jesus, he journeys with us day by day 
through the presence of your Holy Spirit, our advocate and teacher. Lord, send out your Spirit and renew the face of the earth. You are the Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. Be with all who are born this day and those who will die, that your will for them may be fulfilled. And may we all come to share in your heavenly city with voices of unending praise. Amen. I'd like to invite uh, Herb and uh, Jim to help lead us in our congregational meeting. Jim, as our clerk of session, can you determine if we have a, a quorum? Thank you. With that uh, uh, being determined, let us now go to God in prayer. Creator God, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you, Lord, for this day that you have made for this opportunity to worship with each other and to break bread with each other. We ask that you be with us as we have this congregational meeting. Guide us in every act that we do as a congregational community. In your name we pray. Amen. As we have shared... um, Uh, the last several weeks that uh, as we prepare to end my call here at West New Bern Presbyterian Church uh, over the summer, as there will be a lot of uh, things in motion and a lot of transition, uh, I have discussed with the session that it might be best for me to uh, go to part-time Um, starting in July. And uh, Herb has the details. Um, This would, uh, of course, include a change in call, which uh, we need the congregation's vote. So Herb, can you, uh, you could probably stand up right there. I will.
We do need a motion to approve the change of call. Second. All right, we have a, a motion and a second. Are we ready to call a question? question? All those in favor of accepting the call as Herb uh, shared in detail and will provide a copy for anyone to look at in the narthex, uh, say aye. aye. Any opposed? Okay, the eyes have it. Do we have uh, any other business to discuss uh, before we close our congregational meeting and uh, conclude our worship? All right. All those in favor of closing our meeting? All right, the eyes have it. Thank you, Benji. <laughs> So we will uh, conclude our meeting by uh, together uh, with the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn today is Praise Ye the Lord the Almighty. It is hymn 482. Let us now rise in body or spirit and sing together.
us an attitude. Fully teaching us as we live our lives. Put your faith in that attitude. Our Holy Spirit will guide us, will send us out into the world to do God's work. And may the peace of Christ be with you now and forever. Hallelujah.